Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting Roses Are Red, Violets Are Blue, and I'm sipping on some raspberry tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I have a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, oops, almost dropped my palette there, <laughs> burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, green oxide, chrome yellow, cobalt blue, purple violet, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number two bright brush. So this is a quarter inch little flat synthetic brush. I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the color I'm using is just black. So I want my uh, painting to have a nice dark background for all of the elements that I'm gonna be putting on top of it. So I'm choosing to do just a, uh, a black coat as my base coat and then we'll just build everything on top of that. So black covers really well you will only typically need one layer of black on here in order to get a nice coverage to it. Um, if you feel that you wanna do a second coat, you could certainly do that if you had a little bit of streakiness or whatever. I'm not doing any fancy brush stroke, I'm just trying to get a nice coverage over the entire canvas. You can purchase canvases that are already black. They um, are primed at the manufacturer with a coat of black as opposed to a coat of white primer. The, those are great to use if you want a nice dark background, but just know that it's a primer which, that they do, which is not intended to be the final layer of the painting. Of, of the painting. So you will, if you do use a black primed canvas, you'll want to make sure that you put either a final coat of varnish or something on top of it, or just make sure you have put acrylic paint or paint over the whole thing. Once I've got the entire canvas done, what I like to do is just kind of go back and forth, left to right, nice long broad strokes. What this does is it will help to level out my paint and it will also help to make uh, cover any spots that I might have missed and give me a nice even coat. And then we're gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the background 
and the tabletop. So I'll, maybe I can call it the wall, whatever is behind my vase and my flowers. And then I'm going to be doing a little tabletop too. I'm going to use my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium brush to mix a custom color. So what I am going for here is just a little bit of atmospheric dimension on the wall or behind my vase so I can have almost like a highlighted area behind there so it adds some nice dimension to the um, to the painting. So I'm going to be using like a tan type of a color as well as brown and black to give myself this like airy dimensional um, atmospheric element to it. And then I'll be using black and white to give myself a um, kind of a grayscale type of tabletop that will maybe just resemble a black tabletop with a little bit of shine on it. So I have my medium brush. I have already created my tan color here. How I got to that was I used brown and white and then I use just a tiny touch of red and a tiny touch of yellow. So the red and the yellow makes a little bit of an orange color. Mixed together with tan is going to give me this nice kind of golden tan type of a color. And that's what I'm going to be using for my atmospheric dimension. So I'll be using those colors and then of course I'll be using black and white for my um, for my tabletop. So that's the color I'm going for. Once you've got that, you can put that um, mixing tool away. I'm going to take out my large brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a couple of markers because I want my, um, my background to come down about two-thirds of the way down my canvas. So I'm going to give myself a couple of little dots on the side so I don't go any farther than that. So if I find myself about halfway up or down my canvas, for me that's somewhere in this vicinity, and then I go to about the quarter way mark, which is halfway between here and here. I'm a little bit above that. So maybe about an inch, inch and a half above that. I give myself a tiny little mark. And then I can use my brush as a measuring tool to see how high I did it on that side. And come to the other side and give myself a mark at about the same height. I just need a little tiny visual marker so I don't go much farther below that. Then I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of that tan color. And from that point, up, I'm going to be doing this circular type of brush stroke. I can bring it kind of right down to where that marker, those markers are. I want it kind of lighter in the center, so I'm going to add more of this color in the center. I'm using a circular type of brush stroke in order to get it on here, so it gives it this nice soft, almost smoky type of look to it. Once I've got this pretty large area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up brown paint on my dirty brush and this is going to get it to kind of fade out into the darkness. So I didn't wash my brush and I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush. What's going to happen is this will get darker as it dries because it's on top of the black paint as the background. So as I go through this process, I'm watching how it's drying and if it's a little bit too streaky for me, I just kind of keep lightly almost stirring that paint <laughs> or blending that paint on the surface itself. I'm going to keep picking up some brown paint so I can get these um, top edges to kind of work their way out from that central area. And I'm not going for a perfect blend. I'm just going for something that is going to have some nice atmospheric dimension behind my focal point, which is going to be my flowers and my vase. So you could certainly go lighter or darker. You could use even a palette knife to kind of get some uh, like a more textural type of effect to it. You can get it to go lighter if you want or darker. Maybe you want to go with a color of a wall that's in your house. You can certainly manipulate it whatever way you want. And as it's drying, I just kind of with a really light touch, keep kind of spinning this paint around on the surface of the canvas. So that way it gets a little bit softer looking and I don't have too many really large scratchy type of um, marks to it. And again, I just kind of keep picking up a little bit of brown, make sure this kind of goes as far as I want. And if you ever get too much or you feel like you've went too far 
with that color. You can certainly just pick up a little bit of black paint and reverse that color. Or if you want it a little bit lighter, like if I wanted it a little bit lighter in through here, I can pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint and then just kind of illuminate it a little bit more in that center area. So whatever, wherever your visual preference is, you can trail that, that light off into the, to the side of the canvas if you want. Whatever works for you is, is up to you. You are in the driver's seat. So once I've got that done, I'm not gonna um, wash my brush. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of black and white, and I'm gonna give myself kind of a little bit of a shine on this table surface. So I'm picking up black plus a touch of white. So black and white are on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna go back and forth left to right. I'm gonna allow myself to kind of get this um, table surface to have a nice straight line along the top. So I just picked up a little bit more black. And what I do is I'm just kind of going from one dot to the other dot. I already know that they're pretty much the same height. And I just kind of give this nice long continual brush stroke. And that'll give me a pretty straight line up at the top. I don't need it to be clean um, with a nice crisp line. I just want it to look like it's kind of off you know, fading off into that wall. And again, just picked up a little bit of black and white so I can make sure that this blends down in through here. And again, you could get it to go as light or as dark as you want. I think I want it just a touch lighter, so I added a little bit more white. And I'm just looking for it to maybe be, look like it, it's a black table that's got a little bit of shine to it. So that's where the, the little shimmer of gray comes into play. And I'm gonna leave a lot of this bottom area black. And this is gonna help when we go to put our elements of like the little petals and stuff, we'll be able to give them a little reflection and shadow since we've got this a little bit lighter than black. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and, oh, let me just put a little bit more down here, <laughs> and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our vase and our flowers. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I do recommend before you start the step that your canvas is dry though because it will be easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a nice shape that'll be able to be used for our flowers and our vase. I'm going to be also using my small paintbrush as a measuring tool. You could cert uh, when I do my vase, you could certainly use uh, any kind of long object <laughs> that you'd like as a measuring tool. You'll see why in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about the center of my canvas. So it's top to bottom, left to right. The center for me is right about in through here. What I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna go up from here about an inch, inch and a quarter, and then over to the left, maybe about another, I would say inch, inch and a quarter, somewhere in through here is kind of where I'm gonna put my first marker. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go directly below that until I'm about three inches away from the bottom of my canvas. So this is where a measuring tool would come in handy because I can just hold it up and measure how far it is from here, and then just slide it all the way down until I get down as, about as far as I want, and for me, that's right about in through here, and then I can make another mark. What this is gonna do is this is gonna help me make a symmetrical vase that's similar on one side to the other. So once I have these two markers, I'm just gonna draw myself a vertical line. You could even make yourself several markers at the same distance, so you can just connect those markers and you have a pretty symmetric or a pretty um, vertical line that's not tipping left to right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a profile of my vase on one side and then I'll mimic it on the other. So if this is the center of the top of my vase, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the right of that, maybe about in, uh, I would say a little bit further than the center of my canvas. So this is the center of my canvas. I'm over to the right, maybe about another quarter of an inch, so somewhere in through there. On the bottom, I can make myself any distance from here. You could have a wide vase, you could have a narrow vase, whatever you want to make your vase is completely fine to me. I'm gonna bring mine out maybe somewhere in this vicinity. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to here with whatever kind of profile I want. So again, you could have, and you don't even need these spots in the same spot. It could be a more narrow neck or a wider neck, whatever works for you. So I'm just going to bring mine kind of down in a diagonal line like this until maybe I'm about, I would say, two an inch and a half to two inches away from this line and through here. And then I'm just going to bubble it out to the right, something like this. And that's going to give me the right shape, the right side of that. Now the trick is to get the left side to do the same thing. And then again, that's where your measuring tool comes into play. So I can say, I can, from the top, I'm going to measure everything from this line in through here, and I can make as many markers on this left-hand side as I feel are necessary for me to get it pretty similar to that shape. So I take my, my measuring tool, I say, okay, well this is this far from the center, I can bring it over here and give myself a mark. Then I can pick another spot. This spot looks pretty like a good spot for me to measure, so something like that. Bring it over here and give myself a marker at about the same distance away from that center line. I'm going to do another one on this, you know, in the middle, in through here, because that to me feels like another important place to have a marker. And again, you can make as many as you want, and then of course you want one down at the bottom as well. So something like that. So that gives me, and again, I could make 12 markers down here. Whatever is going to work for you to get it pretty similar to that. And then I can just connect my dots. So I'm going to take this from here to here. And then I'm going to connect my dot in through here to give myself a similar profile on this side to that side. And it might not be exactly the same, but it at least got me so my, my vase isn't tipping over. And then I'm going to make a really narrow uh, oval on the top a really narrow oval on the bottom. And when I mean narrow, I mean pretty darn narrow, like probably not more than a half of an inch tall. Um, you can bring it down a little bit lower if you want, and your chalk, of course, will be erased when we, when we paint in later. You could even, at this point, which I think I'm going to do just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take my medium brush with a little bit of water on it and show you where you can erase this line so you don't get confused later. And you could even, if you had lots of chalk in here like I do, you could erase some of that chalk on the inside um, just to make your painting process easier so you don't get confused. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a nice outline for my big rose. And of course, you could do whatever kind of flowers you want. I just thought Roses are red and violets are blue, so we're going to put them together in this painting. So I'm going to put my rose is really large in comparison to the size of little violet flowers. So I'm going to have a huge rose bud up here. We'll have a couple of petals falling off the ground or falling onto the table surface. So I'm going to find myself about the center of the top of my canvas. I'm going to come down from that, I'd say about two inches and over to the left about an inch, somewhere in through here. Then I'm going to on the right hand side of my canvas. I'm going to come down, I would say, maybe about halfway between here and here, somewhere in this vicinity. That'll give you a good starting point. Come all the way over to here till you're about three or four inches away from there, and then up just a little bit maybe. This will be the other little corner to the flower. What I'm doing is I'm creating two petals that kind of flip out on the side. I'm going to connect here to here, but I want a, a bottom platform to my flower as well. So I'm going to go directly up from this corner, maybe about four inches, somewhere in through here. This will be the bottom of my flower. So I'm going to take this from here to here and connect it out like that. And then the same thing over here to here, connect it out like that. And then the top part, I'm going to do a couple of little, pull this in like this, pull this in like this. These are going to be the outside petals. And then I can take from here and just kind of give myself this fun, like little bumpy kind of line around the top. Don't make it super even, just make, you know, some various kinds of bumps. And that'll just be the exterior shape of our rows. I'm going to do a couple of violet flowers. So I was finding that these violets, they have, I think, five petals to them. So I'm going to do them in various kind of um, directions or positions. So I'm going to put a pretty big one down in through here. And I'm just making five kind of circular type of petals like that. They don't need to connect or anything. This is just to get us to um, 
something to paint in. So if I want one kind of looking at the, from the side, I can do maybe three big petals, and then maybe I have a littler one there and a littler one there. So it looks like it's kind of leaning over. Maybe I have a smaller one, maybe somewhere up in through here. And again, they don't have to all be exactly the same. Maybe you don't even see all of the petals. Maybe you only see four of the petals because the other one is leaning over the other way. So don't feel like you have to put all, all five petals. That's just um, a nice kind of generic idea for what the shape of these flowers or what the characteristics of these flowers are. But if you want to do something different, that's totally up to you. Like this one got a long petal on it for whatever reason. You could even have them, you know, one hiding behind the other. I'm kind of having mine all separate, but you could certainly, if you wanted to um, make yours in a different way, like it, one in front of the other that of course will give you some good dimension on it and then I'm going to just put mark a couple of little ones down here so maybe we have a um, violet petal down here maybe I have a big um, rose petal that has fallen down over here and of course if I'm doing a rose petal it's going to be bigger than the violet petal so maybe we've got a couple of little violet petals back in through there maybe I have a little violet petal over on the edge of my canvas like this and that's all oh maybe I'll do my let's do the outline for the leaves at the bottom of um, our rows as well. So these are just kind of long, floppy, um, triangle type of leaves that encapsulate the bottom of the um, flower like this, so something like that. And you don't have to have as many as I'm having. You can certainly make yours whatever way you want. And then we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any adjustments that you want, put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our flowers. I'm using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are red, green, brown, purple, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be creating a lavender color for my violets, because I know the rhyme says violets are blue, but violets are violet and blue, <laughs> so violet is purple. So we're gonna be doing a light, um, lavender color for the base of those. We'll be using red for our rose. We're going to use green and brown for our leaves and that'll be our base coats. So I'm going to start with my little violet flowers. I have cr created a custom lavender or light purple color here. So how I got to that is just purple and white. I didn't use any fancy recipe for this one, just a uh, I would say about equal parts of the purple and white is going to get me this nice lavender color. We'll be making the um, colors in the flowers more vibrant on a future step, but I wanted to start with this light base so we'll have a, um, a nice light base to build the vibrant colors off of. So I am really not going to be doing anything fancy here. I'm not even concerned about making one petal pop out more than the other. All I'm looking to do at this point is just give them a base coat. So I know that because I am working on a dark background in a lot of this area, my paint um, may show some of that darkness through it. So the, you might end up seeing some streakiness on the um, on some of these petals, which is all right because we're putting lots of streakiness in them later with all of our um, color variations that we're going to be putting on them. So don't be alarmed if this isn't a perfect coat. Um, you actually kind of don't really want it to be. If you want to go for some nice uh, visual color variations in those petals, you'll want to kind of keep this as a non-solid color as you go through the painting process and that will only enhance the the visual effects. So I'm just going through in through here. I'm thinking this this leaf back here might either disappear or it might have to go in a different direction. I feel like I've it, it's awkwardly positioned right now behind that flower. So we're gonna do something about that in a minute. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of get these on here. And as you're doing this, if you feel you know that you want to add more of these little flowers, feel free to do so. They're, they're these cute little delicate 
um, flowers. I, th I think they're on the wild side, like you you find them in fields and stuff like that. I don't know if they're a, I should have researched this more, but I don't know if they're a, a plant that you, or a flower that you would typically see at like a nursery or something like that where you would um, buy them for like a bouquet or anything like that because they're so tiny. I think they're just um, little wild flowers. They're cute though. Um, I'm going to put these little petals down in through here that have fallen on our table. However that happened, maybe, you know, they've been in the vase for a little while and they're they're ready to start shedding a couple of their, their petals, something like that. And then I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to put my um, red on my rose. So i wash and dry my brush. I'm just going to be doing my base coat of red on here. The, um, the red is very transparent, and I am fully aware of that. And I embrace that, especially when doing roses, because I love to get a lot of dimension in my rose petals. And when I am building my roses, I like using a dark background a lot of the time because my red is see-through and I can use that back dark background in order to get some great dimension in my petals. So I use it to my advantage, the transparency or the translucency of the, um, the paint. It helps for me to make it look a little bit more natural. And so I'm just kind of going up to my, my chalk marks. You can, again, rearrange these edges however you see fit. But what I'm going to do, once I've got this on here, I am going to put a little bit of a directional brush stroke in the middle of the rose. So I've got this on here. You can kind of just go in this curved line in through here. And if you want to, if you're just super see-through, you can just kind of start like this little spiral type of pro uh, brush stroke up in through here. And that will help to start the formation of the petals. Not necessary, but if you did want to um, start anything like that. Oops, I think I, I think I painted one of my leaves. Hold on a second. I didn't want that to be red. Hold on. We're going to change this color right on the fly. I was like, that looks a little bit weird, this one coming down here. That was supposed to be a leaf. So we're going to just erase that red right off the fly. So I'm doing this with a little bit of water on my brush to get rid of that red paint like that. There we go. It was new paint, so I was able to do that. If I wasn't able to do it, I probably could have just painted over it with my green, but um, I, something looked funky there, <laughs> so we, we've fixed it now. So now that I've done, done that, I'm going to paint one little petal down in through here. I'm going to have this uh, rose petal in front of that little um, violet one, something like this, and then just bringing it right to my to my chalk mark and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put my base coat for my leaves on there. So this is my petal, my rose petal in through there. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm just going to do a base coat with green and brown on my brush at the same time because I want this base coat of these leaves to be kind of on the earthy darker side and this will help me to build some nice um, uh, dimension on them. So I have about equal parts of green and brown on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of go right over um, that, that section that I have um, created for them. And I have this one that's looks like, I don't know if I want it in front or behind that little um, violet petal. So I'm going to make that decision right now. So I think I want that to be maybe, um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to just kind of put it behind it. Just a little, little peekaboo spot behind it. There we go. Maybe something like that. And then we'll give this one in through here. And then I'll put that one back where I initially wanted it over on the right hand side. And then once we've got this done, we're going to um, use this same brush for the next step. Just putting that other <laughs> leaf back over here. And once I've got this done, I'm going to wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting stems and we're going to finish these little leaves. 
I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are green, yellow, white, brown, and black. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be putting a, a thick stem for my rose going right into the bottom of my vase. And then we'll be putting little delicate, more skinny, skinnier, brighter little stems for the violets. And then we'll be coming back and finishing these guys up with a little bit of highlight and shadow. What I'm gonna first do is put my large stem for my um, rose in place. I'm gonna be using green and brown on my brush at the same time. So really I just, I, for me, I'm gonna get mine to come down into the corner of my vase. So this is gonna be my kind of place I'm shooting for. I want my stem to look pretty natural. So wherever the center of your, your flower is, if you want, you wanna kind of come down in like a, a believable kind of trajectory, but I wanted to kind of land in the center of my vase. So I'm gonna give mine a little bit of kind of a bend and then maybe a bend back to here. So if this is the center of my flower, I'm gonna have it kind of, well, I need a little bit more brown back there so you can see it, something like that, scooting behind this guy in through here and coming back out over here. So depending on where you put your flowers, you might, your little violets, you might be in front of or behind one of those um, in through there. Do not worry about this front rim of your vase. We're gonna be painting over that later. So you just take this and kind of, I'm kind of pushing pretty hard with my um, brush so I can get it pretty, this is a pretty wide stem. So I'm gonna kind of come straight down in through here. I'm gonna uh, guide it into this corner like that and then widen it as much as you want can even make it a little bit pointy down at the end if you wanted to. And then I'm gonna give that a minute to um, dry before I put any um, little fine-tuned details on it. I'll be putting a little bit of a highlight and a shadow on it in order to make it more visible, but that's good to start. I'm going to now wash and dry my brush and I'm going to be putting my little ones on with just green to start and then I'll be putting a, a bright highlight on them in a minute. So I'm picking up just green paint. So these are a little bit more delicate and skinnier. So as I do them, I'm not gonna be pushing as hard with my brush so I'll get a skinnier line. And these can come in and cross over or behind this main center one. And I'm not gonna have them coming down as far, but I will have them coming down, I would say a, a couple of them almost to where my um, table meets my wall. So again, I just have green on my brush. I'm gonna start with this guy in through here. So again, I'm thinking this is the center and these are skinnier and they kind of floppier. So I can kind of take it like this. Maybe this one comes out here. It's gonna come up and into my, my vase, something like this. And I think I'm gonna have this one maybe crossing over my other stem, something like that and then maybe just bring it down there. So you don't have to have yours exactly as mine. This one is gonna come over in through here, maybe pop out over here. And the, you know some of them are gonna be crossing each other. Maybe this one goes behind and just pops out a little bit in through there. They don't have to come out at the same angle. Maybe this guy in through here comes out over here. I'm just getting them on here. This little guy in through here, maybe he comes out in this direction and crosses over the front like that. Have fun with them. Maybe this guy in here comes out like this and comes over back here and pops back out over here. <laughs> you can just imagine them to be wherever you want. Maybe it goes behind and comes back out over here or just make them chaotic. You don't have to make them very organized, just wherever you're feeling um, them entering into your vase, make them do that. And then just kind of bringing this down in through here. So those are gonna be my stems. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do, while they're drying, I'm gonna go up top and finish this and then we'll come back and, and put our highlights and shadows on there. So all I really need to do up here is 
decide where I want shadows and highlights. So I'm going to have my light source is up top and to the left a little bit. So I'm going to have lighter tips over here on the left hand side, a left hand side of this guy in through here, maybe the edge of here, and then it'll be a little bit shadowed as it gets close to the, um, the flower itself. So I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to put these little shadows right where these petal or these leaves meet the um, flower itself. So, and we'll enhance this when we do our shadow on the flower itself, but very little bit of paint on my brush to just give me these um, little bits of dark uh, areas on these leaves. So you can tell that they're being affected by the light source. So just little bits in through there. This one is gonna get a little bit up this way in through here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow maybe in here. This one's gonna be kind of coming over this one like that. So just these little shadows right where the um, where I feel the, pe the leaf is bending over or being affected by whatever it's near. So this part of the leaf would maybe cast a shadow on the interior part of the leaf as it's next to the flower itself. So those would be my little shadows. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put uh, green and white paint on my brush. So just a little bit on the tip of my brush of both green and white and this is going to act as my highlight color. So I can put it over here where I feel this leaf would be illuminated and then I can get it to blend in with a little bit more green on my brush to that darker area. So less is more especially when you're doing just this little tiny detail on a leaf if you wanted to show that it's being illuminated by a light source. I'm going to put a bunch on this little tip in through here, like it's really being seen by the light. And I might add a little bit of yellow as well, um, but I'm just kind of getting these highlights on here while I have that white and green on my brush. And then I'm just illuminating those little tips that I feel would be the brightest. And then I can go back into my green to get it to, to blend back into the darker areas. So when doing especially just little leaves like this and you want them to have a lot of effect from the light, just knowing where that light source is and kind of imagining how that leaf is kind of leaning over, that's going to help you um, determine what the effect that the light has on it. Like even this part here, maybe this petal of the um, violet is casting a shadow on this little leaf here. So I could make that, uh, that little tip a little bit darker if I felt that that was going to um, benefit me. And then I'm gonna use that same thought process when I go to do the, um, the stems. But I'm gonna make my stems a little bit more of a, a, on the violets, I'll make them a little bit more of a greenish yellow color. I'm just adding a little bit more highlight over here to get that to pop out just a little bit more. And I would let it dry and if there was any areas that I felt um, needed a little bit more enhancement on those, I certainly would do that as well. So I'm gonna come down to my stems. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush to make sure that I've got good shadow on this big one. Um, I'm gonna put some shadow on this right hand side. So this is just black paint coming down the right hand side of my big rose stem. So this is gonna allow it to um, stand out from the other ones and give it, and I'm skipping wherever the other ones were gonna be sitting in front of it. I'm skipping those and just putting a, a black line coming down this side. And if I felt that there would be a little shadow from any of these stems in front of it, I can just put a little, a little shadow like that right in front of it. Then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of um, brown and white as my highlight color for my rose stem. So brown and white on my brush at the same time. And just illuminating a little bit of this large stem in through here. So I'm choosing to do different color on my large stem than I'm gonna do on my little stems. So the viewer can tell the difference between the two. And you could certainly use more green. You could use, you could even use like a little rusty 
type of a color if you wanted to, whatever works for you to um, allow that viewer to see the difference. I just picked up a little bit of green just to tie, uh, connect my, my brown to my, to my black. So just a little bit of green to get that to be a little bit more visible. There we go. Now I'm going to do my little stems. So green, yellow, and white are going on my brush at the same time. Green, yellow, and white. And I'm going to do a bright highlight on these little guys in through here. So green, yellow, and white is going to set these little tiny ones um, out from that big front or from the rose one. So green, yellow, and white. And I'm just kind of giving it a second coat with this brighter color. And I'm making sure I've got some going in front of that big stem, which I've already kind of planned for, like this. And then once I've got this done, I just kind of keep playing with this green, yellow, and white on these, um, on these little tiny ones, making sure that I've got as much on here as I want. This one's got one in through here. And then once I've got this done, I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to use my small brush for the next step. So you can fiddle with this as much as you want. You can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our violet flowers. I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm using are purple, white, blue, yellow, and probably that lavender color that we created as well. So I'm going to have mine being um, a little bit more richer or darker with their purple, and then they're going to have a faded blue area in the middle, and then um, like in the middle of the petals, and then there's going to be a center to it with these little white, yellow, prickly type of things. <laughs> so we're going to do the petals first, and then we'll come back and do the little prickly center things. I'm going to pick up purple, my dark purple, and white at the same time. And what I'm going to be doing is giving myself a second layer on my petals, and this is going to, um, because I'm using both colors at the same time, it's going to allow me to get this more rich tone to them, something like that, and more of a kind of a stripey type of look to them. So I'm using, again, both the colors on my brush, my purple and my white, and in, this is where you can kind of get some of them to separate from one another. Maybe one of them becomes lighter than the other because it's being hit by the sun a little bit more. You can have a lot of fun with making these as these petals as dark or as light as you want. I was seeing them in so many different um, values, be it light or dark, so you can really use your own visual preference uh, uh, when you get to making these as purple or as lavender as you want. Um, and again, in a minute, I'll come back and give it a nice um, blue type of tone in the center of it. So uh, purple and white. And when I'm doing these um, smaller ones with maybe one that I had a leaf off the edge of it, like maybe there's a little leaf on the, on, on the other side. You can certainly make, again, make these as detailed as you want or as impressionistic as you want. If you're able to see the difference between the petals, great. If not, don't you know, worry about it because when we go to do the little blue detail and the details on the inside, oh, that one's going to be a big petal. We're just going to roll with it. <laughs> just let it happen. <laughs> um, when it comes to adding those additional details, even if you didn't get your petals exactly as you had hoped they would be, once we get those additional um, details on, that's going to help to make it look a little bit more realistic and put the, um, the, the iconic kind of characteristics into the flower itself. And again, I'm just using the, the white and the, and the purple in order to give myself the, um, the little separation between these um, petals. So this is what's referred to as a one, one stroke brush stroke <laughs> um, where you're using multiple colors 
at the same time in order to achieve this multi-toned kind of look to it. So it's, it's really fun when you're doing petals and stuff like that because you can really um, get some great dimensional elements without doing a whole lot of work. The trick is to just not over blend. So as I'm doing this, if I, I'm going through this and I'm like, oh, that looks great, it's nice and stripey and it's you know giving me some a uh, really cool effect, you just wanna leave it. You don't want to go back and keep fiddling with it because you're gonna turn it all one solid color and that would defeat the purpose of using a um, multiple colors on your brush at the same time because that's intended to give you multiple colors <laughs> in one area. And if you go and blend it, then you're, you're defeating the purpose. So again, this is just, uh, purple and white and I just keep uh, com doing a second coat on these petals. So this one in through here looks like it's going to overlap that one. And just make sure when you're going around like by a stem, make sure that your stem connects. So that one, my stem wasn't connected so I needed to bring that, that petal out a little bit further. And if you have a petal that sits behind another one, allow it to sit behind the other one. Let that, um, that front petal kind of show up. And these little petals can be kind of floppy, they can lean over, or they can be really perky and almost look kind of stiff. So that's going to be up to you, whatever kind of shape it ends up, just roll with it because there's so many different um, varieties of when they're in bloom or when they're, you know, um, just blossoming, what different kind of colors they can be or shapes. I'm going to go ahead and do these little guys down in through here. And then once I've got this coat on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put the um, little blue area on. So washing and drying my brush and I'm going to use a tiny bit of cobalt blue and just an itty bitty bit and I'm going to put it in the centers of the flowers. So just a tiny bit of the cobalt blue. I'm going to start back at the one kind of in the order that I did them. So I worked from left to right and I'm just taking a little bit of this blue and just pulling it into the center of those um, of the flower and up the petals a little bit. If you're going about this and, and it becomes too much or you feel like you brought it too far, you can always just let it dry for a minute and then you can bring back some of that lavender or that purple color. And again, less is more on your brush, just a teeny tiny bit on your brush and you can just kind of rub it or pull it into the centers of that flower, into that, um, into that petal and if your purple is still wet a little bit, like I just ran through a little bit of wet purple, just blend it in. Let it let it be part of that flower. These again, in the in the in the um, poem, it is violets are blue. <laughs> so if you make your violets really blue, it's all right. Just say that you're you know going with what the poem told you to do. So like I just put a little bit of extra. Um, purple in through there because it was wet so we just let it happen and then I'm going to go ahead and put some more blue in the center of these guys in through here and again as as vibrant or as subtle as you want it to be is up to you I'm just pulling it into these um, these petals I think I want that to be a little bit more so just put in a little bit more of the blue and I again I'm running through a little bit of wet purple so I'm just kind of I'm working with it on the fly here, just pulling it into those petals. That works. And then down on these guys and through here, just pick a side. Uh, whatever side you want that blue to be on, just pick a side and just kind of rub it on in through there. And again, you could certainly use a little bit of um, the lavender to help it blend if you wanted to. Just putting this on in through here and then we'll pull a little bit over in through here. And then I just need to pop on the centers. So the centers, what I'm going to do, I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm putting yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So yellow and white. I'll show you what I got on my brush here. So I have yellow and white on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be dotting in these little, um, just, I, I don't know if my hand's in the way or not, but just these little tiny speckle marks in the center of that flower. You can make them very visible or not as visible, whatever works for you, just these little tiny speckles in the center 
Oh, oh that was that was too big for me. <laughs> and I'm going to just let it dry because I it's a pretty big blob right now. <laughs> so, we're going to we're going to leave that one alone. But the other ones up here are just going to kind of put these little tiny speckles, yellow and white, try not to overblend it, just yellow and white little speckles in the middle. You could it, they I saw them kind of um in a variety of ways where they could be really far into the petals or really um, close to the center. So again, if yours get away from you, it's okay. Just let it, let it ride. And then I'm just kind of, kind of speckle in the centers on all of these. And then once I get this done, I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step. I'm going to add a little bit more white in the center of this one. I'm going to wipe my brush off here and see if I can't manipulate this guy. There we go, that works. And then I'm going to use this same brush for the next step. So I'm going to wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the shadows within the rose petals. I'm going to be in the second coat of the rose, but <laughs> we'll just call it shadows. I'm going to use my small brush. What I'm in essence going to be doing, I'm going to be using a combination of red, black, and brown. I'm going to be providing the um, shadows on the dark side of the rose. So my, again, my light source I'm imagining to be up and to the left a little bit. So on the main part of the flower, I'm going to have this bottom right hand side the darkest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of be giving myself a roadmap for where all where the inside of e, all the petals are. So I'll be kind of separating out some front petals and then we'll give a little bit of shadow and stuff on the inside. I'll be also hitting my little petal down below <laughs> at, at, in the same process, but I'm going to concentrate the majority up top and then we'll just hit that bottom one as we close out the step. So I'm going to use my um, my small brush to, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint with red paint on my brush. So I just have an itty bitty bit of um, black paint with a little bit of red paint. The black can very easily take over and it's very difficult to reverse once it's on there. So proceed with caution when it comes to the black paint. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to be adding a shadow on this bottom right hand side. So I've got um, black little bit of black with red paint and I'm going to just kind of give myself a little bit of a shadow down below and you'll be able to feel like as soon as you start to put it on if it's really jet jet black then you probably have too much black on your brush and just wipe it off on your paper towel that's why we're using a smaller brush too so we don't over um, make it too too dark and I'm just kind of giving myself a nice little gradient in through here so that gave me a nice dark area down at the bottom right hand side of it. I'm going to do that same color combination um, with black and red. So mostly red with just a tiny bit of black on my brush. I'm going to give myself kind of an outline for my petals. So I've got already some real distinct ones coming out in through here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine this to be the uh, petal kind of leaning over. So I'm going to take this bottom side of it and give myself just a little kind of curve in through here and again just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and get this to blend down into that red so I wipe my brush off picked up a little bit more red just so I can get this to blend down into this this red in through here you don't need to do really firm lines or dark lines, you know, like black, black lines, just something that gives the information that maybe that's flipped over a little bit. Again, a little bit of red and black. I'm going to give a couple more um, distinct kind of areas. So this one up in through here, I'm going to do the same thing that I just did to this one. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it maybe somewhere in through here. And then this one, I feel like I want it to kind of like curl over towards the viewer a little bit. So I'm going to also take it, like give a little point in through there and then just bring this down kind of in a curve like this around the flower itself. And then I'll get this whole area to just blend into the red. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more red on my brush, on my dirty brush, and get that darkness to just kind of blend out like that. 
wipe my brush off, pick up more red, just to make sure I have a good second coat down in through here. And if you can still see through uh, your red and it's still a little streaky at this point, it's okay because we're gonna be um, fixing that on the future step. So I'm picking up a little bit more red and black. I'm gonna separate this from this one in through here. So I'm gonna just kind of give this whole area a little bit of darkness underneath here. And again, yours does not have to be exactly the same as mine. I am, you know, my petals, I probably laid them out a little bit differently than you did. So that's gonna make a big difference when you go to, um, when you go to do these details. I'm just trying to imagine these petals kind of, this one kind of pops out over here. I've got another one. They're layering around this kind of bulb so you can kind of pull out the edge of one and get it to flip out towards the viewer. So again, black and red is going on my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I've got this one coming in through here. This one I'm gonna kind of have almost meeting this one. So something like this, leaving a little edge somewhere in through there. And then I'm gonna maybe do the same thing right in through here. Once you get the hang of it and you can see um, the idea of what you're doing, it makes the building process a little bit easier. I've painted a thousand roses in my day and I can, uh, once I get that exterior just kind of shape, I can play with those petals. I can just paint them on the fly because I can imagine, ooh, this one's gonna lean over and I can put a shadow underneath it. So this one in through here, I'm gonna, kind of put um, a little, probably pull this a little bit too. I'm gonna bring that just down, just a little bit like that. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more red just to get this to blend down. I think I wanted this to be fully leaning over, so I'll get that to make sense in a minute, but giving my second coat of red in through here, made my flower a little bit bigger, <laughs> like that. And then the, the, the bottom ones are, in my opinion, probably the more difficult ones because you want to give them more detail and attention. But once we get up into those littler ones up top, those are just a bunch of mark making in, in my opinion. I think this one's giving me a little, I don't like this edge right here. I just picked up a little bit more black. I don't feel like I got, there we go. There we go. That makes me happy. It didn't make much sense the way that it was leaning over. So we just, we just modify it a little bit. There we go. So these, uh, I'm going to do these next two in through here and then we'll, we'll get some, um, those little ones to go. So red and black again, this is where I've got, um, I feel like these light areas, I can, I can utilize them, um, as the edges. So because I did this spiral for the, um, for that first coat, what I can do now is I can take a little bit of my red and black and just find the light area and say that that's a piece, a piece of the petal that's leaning over towards the viewer. And I can take this and I can say, okay, well that, maybe that's one. Maybe we've got the edge of one in through here like that. Maybe this, this one that's leaning over here kind of closes up in through here like that. And I'll show you how to get you know, more distinct edges to them, but I've already got these bright little edges that just popped out because of the way that I applied that, that base coat up and through there. So this one in through here, I feel we've got a little edge going on here. I'm gonna put a second coat on this big petal right here with red paint. I just, I didn't wash my brush. I just put some additional red on there to get that a nice second coat in through here and you can see how they're they're starting to emerge as individual petals. This in through here, I feel like I gotta um, put a little bit more delineation. Maybe we've got, maybe this is one petal and then this is another one. So I think I need to just put a little darkness right in through here. And you know, yours does not have to be every single petal exactly laid out, planned out perfectly executed, but if you can get the general gist and, and if it reads as, you know, this flower in that circular type of um, direction with these hundreds of little petals just kind of flopping out and over, it's going to make it really believable. Just putting another coat of my red on in through here. And again, we're going to do another step 
that will allow us to add vibrancy to these um, edges. But right now I'm going to put a little bit more black and red on my brush and I'm going to accentuate the little dark areas in inside these little petals up and through here. So I'm just finding dark areas that are already there. I did say that I was going to use brown, but I'm feeling like I'm, I'm getting away with using the black and the red without um, needing the brown. So if you're going through your process and the black is too black, then back off of it and use brown instead as your dark shadow maker. But I'm being able to control my black enough where I don't need to resort to using, um, using brown. But if you, again, are finding that your black is too black and you can't control its quantity, then stop using the black and start using brown instead of the black. So again, just kind of accentuated some of those dark areas are in the center and now I'm just picking up more red in order to get a second coat on the brighter um, little petals and then I'm going to do a quick um, pass on my one that's on the on the table surface in a second once I get this in through here and it's looking like it's got lots of dimension already and we haven't even touched the highlights so that excites me um, we're gonna we're gonna have some beautiful highlight on the tips of these of these petals so pretty all right i'm going to move down to the bottom now i'm going to um, again just pick up a tiny bit of red and black i feel like i want to have maybe a little shadow right in through here as this uh, petal kind of dips and lays down on the surface of the of the table so this is just a little bit of red and black and then just wipe my brush off pick up red and just give the um, part that I feel would pop out the most to the viewer, a second coat with that red and make it kind of blend in a little bit with that shadow in through there or the dark side of it. <laughs> and then I'm going to um, just kind of blend this out a little bit and then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows on your um, petals and your um, second coat on them, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our rose and the petal that's on the ground too. <laughs> I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm using are red, white, a little bit of yellow if necessary, and perhaps a little brown if necessary. So what I'm really gonna do is I am going to be adding highlights to these petals in order to tell the story of where the light source is as well as to give them a little bit more form and bend so they look like they're kind of bending over a little bit more and maybe a little bit more highlight down at this um, bottom part in order to make it look a little bit more round. So I'm gonna be predominantly using red and white, but depending on the red that you have, it may turn to pink on you. So what I will be doing a lot of times I'm going to be I'm going to pre-mix myself kind of a light red color which is just red and white that's going to be my dominant highlight color but if I run into any areas where I'm like ah that's just a little bit too pink for me what I can do is add a tiny touch of yellow into it and that's going to cut that pink look to it and it'll make it look more of like a peachy or a light red color. So just know that if uh, at times I might be using it with a tiny touch of yellow if I feel it's going to pink, um, but most of the time it's just going to be red and white to get this light red color. I have a very nice true red that doesn't have a lot of magenta in it, so it works really well as a highlight color for red. So I've got my my um, light red on my brush and what I'm going to do my high my light is up and to the left so I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on this area of the um, bottom portion of the flower in through here so again I'm thinking about just the main um, the main uh, shape of the flower right now I don't need a lot of paint just put a little bit on there and then I wipe my brush off pick up red and get it to blend out so it's not too too bright and that way it just blends into those darker areas a little bit in through here just to get that shape 
This is a petal, the edge of a petal that we'll be dealing with in a minute. And then I just kind of rub it over with the remnants on my brush over to this right side. So it's brighter here and then it fades out there. So I'm gonna use that thought process with my light red in order to give all the little tips of the petals and then um, I'll add an even brighter highlight to give them more, more dimension. So I have my light red. I'm gonna start over here and I'm really gonna be doing the areas that I feel are being illuminated by that um, light source as well as are closest to the viewer. So if I've got a little edge to the petal popping out of the viewer in through here, I'm gonna put it. This one in through here, I feel like I'd have a little bit up at the top and then the edge of that petal kind of comes down and meets in through there. And I'm gonna do the same thing before I pick up some red, a little bit on this petal in through here. I'm gonna now pick up red in order to get it to blend into that, that dark shadowy area. So I put the highlight on and then I blend it into that shadow area. And again, I'm, I'm, all, I'm always in my head thinking what part of that petal is popping out to the viewer and that's where I'm gonna put my, my highlight. So for me, say this one in through here, I would think that it would pop out somewhere in through there and then I would have my little petal kind of um, edge in through there and then I can just rub it out, give it soft edges to that red. I picked up a little bit more red. And again, the bigger petals are gonna be the more difficult. They're gonna be the ones that you that you work the hardest on. But um, you know, once you've got the, the, the gist of it, it becomes a little bit more easy to do. I feel like I need a, um, a bottom to this little petal in through here. So, or a little line for it to um, be closed off. I just picked up a touch of brown paint so I'm just gonna kind of bring the illusion or the essence of it, same thing with these guys in through here, or maybe a little highlight, is that what I want? Tiny bit of a highlight, I just picked up a little bit of the light red. Yeah, there we go. I just needed the essence of that petal kind of coming to a resting place <laughs> down with the other one. So yeah, that, that worked out for me. Same thing with these little guys in through here. So that gives me that edge that I need. All right, so just a little bit of my light red. Again, just kind of finding the tips or not necessarily the tip, but the part that is up highest towards that light source. So if this leans over, I would put my highlight maybe up in through here, then wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of red for the part that droops down, similar to how I just did that one in through there. And then I just kind of repeat this process as I go back towards um, the upper ones. Again, the upper ones aren't gonna be as big of an area, but I'm putting my highlight on where I feel it would be hoof me. This one maybe gets a little bit more cause it's closer to the, it's on the side of the light source. I know I put a little bit on a minute ago, but I felt like I wanted to amp it up a little bit and then wipe my brush off, pick up some red, get it to blend down into that shadowy area and if you needed to pick up more black or more brown feel free to do so just be careful if you do go into um, the black that you make sure that you wash your brush before you pick up the highlight color again and then I'm just going to pick up my light red again and again in these little interior parts I really don't need to do much I'm just going to kind of pick some of these lighter pieces give myself a little tap with that highlight color and once I've got all of them on here what I'm going to do is I will come back with a touch of white um, and give an even brighter highlight on just a couple of the um, of the petals and you could since the light source is over on the left you could put more highlights on this left side here um, that'll be up to you and or depending on what direction, maybe you, maybe you amp up the highlights on the top of the, um, of the flower. That'll, that'll show that it's more directly above. So that's gonna be up to you how, where you kinda wanna tell the story of your light source. So now that's looking pretty good. I got some good highlights on there. I'm gonna pick up my light red plus white right now. So light red plus a tiny bit of white, not a lot. I just want to kind of amp up a couple of little highlight spots. So maybe right in through here, give myself just an itty bitty bit more of a um, vibrant, almost like a shine on it. 
that looks pretty good and I'm going to do the same thing up on a couple of my petals as well so maybe just a little tiny tip on that edge maybe a little bit in through here maybe a touch in through here so not much just little little tops of my light red plus a little bit of white and of course you could make yours like I said as vibrant as you want maybe you want to do a different color rose maybe you want your rose to be you know yellow or orange or black maybe you want to do a really cool black rose whatever is speaking to you is is up to you I'm kind of bending this one just a little bit more with a little bit more lightness so it looks like it's catching that light a little bit more right over in through here so again just light red plus my white is getting these little edges over in through here and then I would just kind of fiddle with it I let it I like to let it dry and kind of sit on it for a couple of minutes see if there's any little um, pops of brightness that I think would benefit me for putting them on and I'm going to put a little highlight on the little um, petal that's on the table you could if you felt like you went too light on these just let them dry for a minute and you can come back on top of it with the red so if it's too light just come back you can come back on top with the red and that will give you um, a nice vibrant red that looks really nice and realistic and has got some good vibrancy to it. So I'm going to move right down to the bottom now and give myself a little highlight down here and just use my light red and give myself just a little, little highlight up there, a little bit right in through here and then just blend it out. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put this small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to be finishing our vase. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm using all of my colors. <laughs> I'm gonna use, well, I say that, but I'm gonna, all of my non-mixed colors. <laughs> I'm gonna use black, white, uh, green, red, blue, purple. I'll probably not use brown. I say that and I might pick it up. <laughs> I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to be doing. What I'm in essence going to be doing is I want to kind of create a transparent glass-like vase and in order to do that I'm going to have a ton of reflections of the colors that are around this vase. So that's going to be all of my flower colors. Um, as well as any lights that are in the room with this vase. Um, but before I add those reflections, I've got to put liquid in my vase and I've got to kind of give it an outline so I know where, I, where I'm headed. So obviously I already have my chalk outline, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a rim um, and my water line and I'm going to kind of outline the vase so we have a place to kind of a nice structure to work off of and by doing that I'm going to be using watered down black paint so I've got my black paint I've got my medium brush what I'm doing is I'm going to add drops of water into it until it's a very a very thin consistency kind of like an ink type of a consistency and I don't want to have a ton of paint on my brush or a ton of this mixture on my brush so once I've got it pretty watered down I can just kind of tap it off on my paper towel and that'll give me enough to start what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this oval but I need some of that oval behind my my um my stems and some in front so I'm going to do the bottom um, part of my oval is going to be in front of my stems and the top part is going to be behind the stems. So I'm going to do the front part first so it gives, gets us all warmed up and we don't get scared. <laughs> so I'm going to go right over my um, chalk mark. So this is just my watered down black paint. I'm going right over my chalk mark and bringing it right up to this little corner in through here. And then I've got to skip it um, behind those stems. If you're not feeling comfortable about skipping the stems, what you could do, just paint ov over the stems and then come back on top of your rim with the stem colors. But I think I'm going to get away with just kind of skipping them like this. But again, if you didn't feel confident, you could certainly um, 
I might end up coming back on top if I bump into them a little bit. I'm all right with that, but I'm just kind of skipping them back in through here and then just come coming back around like this. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna give us kind of this little bit of a shadowy area underneath the rim of the, um, of the vase. I'm kind of enhancing it right now by just pushing my brush a little bit harder and bringing this dark area down the, ins the back side of that glass a little bit, not bringing it all the way down to the front rim, but enough so it looks like it's um, got a little bit of a shadowy type of effect um, on the top of that rim back there. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now what I'm gonna do, make sure I got this the way that I want, just doing another, another layer. There we go, that works. Make sure it's as um, straight as I want. And it's gonna be transparent, so you're gonna see that stuff underneath it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same color mixture and I'm gonna come down my, the sides of my vase. So again, this is just you know starting my head out right. Um, it's starting the process of getting rid of my chalk mark. So just this, uh, this thinned out black paint. And don't worry if it's perfect or not because we're going to be, we've got lots of reflections and stuff that are gonna come on top of this in a little while that will help to eliminate any imperfections. That's just my chalk mark there. I can certainly uh, get rid of that later as well. Do the same thing over on this side, just kind of come in riding down my chalk mark. And if you miss some of your chalk mark, don't worry about it. Well, like I said, take care of that later. Just come in down this left-hand side like that. Now I'm gonna put um, my water line in. So again, same mixture with my uh, thinned out black paint. I'm gonna come uh, maybe about halfway between, uh, maybe, a third of the way between here and here. So somewhere in this vicinity. And again, you can use anything you that helps you to kind of measure where that is. And I'm gonna do a, a similar oval to what I did at the top. So I'm gonna do the front part of it first because that to me is gonna be the easier part. I'm gonna take it from here and just give myself a little curved line connecting my two markers. So just a little curved line connecting those two markers and then I'm going to go around the back side of it. So taking it in a oval and again if you don't feel confident, you might not even, maybe your um, your uh, stems are all clumped together, that's fine. Once I've got this one, the, the water line is a little bit easier to um, manipulate than the top because I'm putting ripples in it. So once I've got that in there I'm just going to kind of put these little ripples in the front of the um, stems a little bit like that. That'll work. Um, and then I'm gonna do a similar exercise down at the bottom, just kind of gonna set my head straight with a little bit of my oval in through here. And whatever chalk mark I don't get rid of right now, I'm okay with uh, because I'm just gonna color that part right in because it's the bottom of the the glass, I can get away with that, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is with this, um, with this brush, I'm going to wash and dry this brush and I'm gonna put a gloss or a glaze on the outside of the glass. So I will be putting reflections in a minute, but right now what I wanna do is kind of give the viewer the shape of the glass and kind of make it like it's, you know, got some form to it. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub in a see-through layer of paint on top of like in through here and over on this right-hand side in order to give it a little bit of shape. So you could do it with your lavender color, you could do it with red and white. I'm gonna just do it with um, a little bit of watered down, what, am I, what color am I gonna do? I think I'm gonna use just uh, a little bit of white and brown and just and yellow apparently <laughs> I got a little bit of yellow in there too so any kind of very pale color will work what and you just want to add moisture to it so I'm adding a little bit of water to it the and the trick is is you don't want it super runny runny but you want it wet enough so you can so you can see through it so once I've got this mixture on my brush 
what I can do is I can pick an area, say over in through here, I'm putting that light color on, and then what I do is I blend it out until it kind of disappears. You can see how you can see the um, the objects underneath it. That's allowing you allowing it to look like it is transparent. If it's too heavy, you can just add a little bit more moisture onto your brush, and you can thin it out. So you can scrub it a little bit harder, and that's going to make it a little bit more transparent. And if it goes too wrong on you, what you can do is just take more water on your brush and lift it off of your canvas and start over. But I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I can still see all of my um, my uh, stems underneath it. I'm just kind of thinning this out so I can have a nice smooth uh, look to it. And then I'm gonna do a similar step at the bottom in through here um, so I can, actually I'm gonna put just a tiny bit more right in through here on this edge of the glass like that. So wherever you feel that that glass is going to pop out the most. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Again, I'm going to use that tan color plus some white on my brush. You're going to see it more on here. And because I'm using water, it's going to be brighter when it's wet than it is when it's when it dries. So I've got my color on in through here and then I just start working it around, allowing for it to be transparent so I can see through it. And I'm going to show you what happens if I put a tiny bit of blue on my brush. So you could do any kind of light color. I just put a little bit of blue on my brush. So maybe it's reflecting something else. But again, we're going to be doing reflections in a minute. I just wanted to show you how that color would change a little bit. If I did opt for a light blue or a light lavender, it still works out. So whatever light color you choose will, will work out. And then I'm just going to kind of spread this out so I... So it's not streaky, but you can still see through it. Just making sure I've got it as soft as I want. It's looking pretty good. So now that I've got that on there, I'm gonna start adding my reflections. So my reflections are from everything around. They're from my flowers, they're, you know, the red flowers, the purple flowers, the lights in the room, where, whatever you want. So I'm gonna add some really vibrant reflections from lights in the room, and then I'm gonna add some subtle reflections from the colors of my flowers as well. So I'm gonna pick up a touch of white paint on my brush with a little bit of water, so white and water. I'm gonna put um, a little bright edge to my rim over in through here. I'm gonna put it at the top side of that rim, so the top side of that um, dark shadowy area that we did earlier. So this is white plus water on my brush and I'm just kind of blending it out. I feel like I have a little bit too much water on my brush so I just wiped it off on my paper towel and it looks like I may end up wanting to um, re, you know, touch up my stems after I'm done, which I can certainly do that. I bumped into a couple of them, which I'm all right with. So again, just white with water up at this top edge like that. And then I'm gonna do some really bright highlights down this left-hand side. So I'm picking up a little bit more white paint on my brush. I'm going to come down this left hand side and you don't have to stay within the black. You can paint on top of the black as well. So when doing these reflections, you can be very bold with them. You can be very subtle with them. I'm going to put a big one right in through here. So I'm, I just picked up more white paint. I'm going to go in through here. I really am just trying to take on the shape of that vase with these um, reflection. So I'm going to do a pretty large section and they're geometric type of shapes. So they've got, they can have clean edges to them. They can take on the, 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 I say the shape, the form of that object. So when I go down below, I'm going to have them curving around the, the shape or the form of that object. So I'm just kind of blending this in so I have a nice, so it doesn't look dry. There we go, that looks pretty to me. I'm gonna do a big one over here on this left-hand side. So right now I'm just kind of picking up white. I'm gonna add some colors to it in a little bit, but right now I'm just using white. You could use that um, like watered down tan if you wanted to, whatever, wherever your comfort zone is. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of water on my brush so I can get a nice smooth line here. I'm bringing this down to the bottom. I'm going to do another. I think I, um, I'm also going to put a couple of little 
squiggles in my in my water line as well in through here so I'm gonna again I'm gonna put color on it in a minute but I just want to get my some these light areas first that's gonna help me to build a nice easy way for for coloring in there so that's looking good I'm gonna do a big highlight down this left hand side similar to that one but down at the bottom here so I'm gonna cross it over my um, I just have to concentrate here for a second. And in my head, I'm saying this is the outside of the glass. So I, I don't care if I'm going over any of the objects that I've painted. I'm just trying to take on the shape or the form of my, um, of my piece of glass. And then you can just add, I'm just adding a little bit of water onto my brush so I can um, have a nice smooth edge in through here and just kind of pulling it down and then once I've got this on here just blending it blending it and <laughs> nice clean line there we go now I'm going to just um, put maybe a couple of little light spots in the bottom of my glass and again I'm going to be hitting color in a minute but this is just little bits of white giving me some shiny spots maybe little extra shiny spot down there at the bottom maybe a little extra shiny spots coming up this right hand side maybe a couple little streaks over on this right side I'm not going to do the um, as bright on the right side as I did on the left so this will imply that the light source is more on the left in the room than it is on the right <laughs> so something like this maybe a couple little skinny streaks in through there it's looking pretty good so now I'm going to start adding some color you could wash and dry your brush which I'm going to do I'm going to pick up uh, I think I'm going to pick up some of that lavender color the light purple that we use I'm going to streak that down give some some reflections over here because I have a lot of flowers over on this side so just pulling some of that lavender color in maybe I've got some great lavender color reflections on the side of this glass so I can go right on top of my white I can go on top of my black I can go wherever I want reflections are fabulous when it comes to um, this aspect because depending on where the light is is shining depending on what color is you know next to another color they can really take on little bits of different appearance so just have fun with it is kind of the moral to my story. I think actually I want a little bit of my lavender on my glass over here. I'm just wiping my brush off so I have very little bit of paint on there. Just kind of giving a little extra shine. Maybe this side is reflecting from there. That looks pretty. I think I want to do that here too. Once you do something one place, it's like, oh, I want that somewhere else too. This is just the remnants of that lavender. I'm just kind of adding onto my glass a little bit in through here. And then I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit of my cobalt blue. I'm not going to do a ton with the cobalt blue because that's just in the little centers, but I still can get it to re be represented somewhere, maybe, maybe a little bit there. And now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and pick up a little bit of red. So I got big red flower up there, so why not put a big red reflection on the glass edge in through here? If my hand could stay steady, that'd be better. <laughs> okay, well, this reflection is going to be much bigger than I anticipated. Then a little bit of red in through here like that. I think I'm going to pull it down this edge of the glass a little bit too. And if you wanted it to, to be really, really red, you could certainly put a base coat of white on there and then add red on top of it. I'm going to put a little bit of red in my water line. So again, this can be reflecting. Your water can have little shimmers of all the colors around it. So just little bits in through there. Maybe we put a nice big red uh, reflection down here, maybe from that or from the flower, whatever you can imagine it to be. And maybe I'll even put a little, like I did with the lavender, maybe I'll put a little bit of the red kind of shimmering on uh, the glass as well. So just a little bit of red kind of tinging or, you know, tinting the glass a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty. It can do, it can, glass is magical. <laughs> it has, it has all kinds of reflective qualities. It can be prismatic or, you know, it's just a fun, 
um, thing to work with. I just put a tiny bit more red on my brush and just kind of rubbing it on like a glaze on the outside of that glass. And then once I got this done, I'm going to be using uh, my smoke. Uh, yeah, we're going to use our, no, let's use this brush, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, make any little adjustments that you want. Put more reflections, less reflections. Ooh, I think I'm going yellow and white. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> I just I just feel like I want something from these stems too. I just picked up a little bit of yellow and white. I'm going to put a little a little bit right here, a little extra shine in through there. Do I want it anywhere else? Maybe a little bit up and through here. So this is just yellow and white to catch those, the, the essence of the little stems. I think that's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint shadows and reflections on the table surface of our vase and our, and our little petals and stuff. I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, lavender, blue, and red, and yellow, and green, <laughs> and brown. <laughs> maybe brown, maybe not brown. So I, how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put my shadows on first. Um, I see some chalk residue here that's <laughs> driving me crazy. Um, I'm going to put my shadows on first and then we're going to put some reflections. So shadows are going to be created. We'll do the petals first because those will be a little bit easier. Then we'll do a shadow of our vase, which is tricky because the vase is see-through. So there wouldn't necessarily be a ton of shadow, but I, I detect or I imagine that there would be a little bit of one down and through here. And then we'll put our reflection to indicate that this is a shiny surface that our objects are on. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black. You could use black with a touch of water on your brush if you're nervous about the shadow becoming too dark. Again, my light source is up and a little to the left, so my shadows are gonna be directly below these guys and maybe a little to the right. So I'm gonna just put a little underline underneath them to show that they've got a little bit of shape to it, and then just pull it out a little bit on that right hand side. You could make soft shadows or firm shadows, that would be up to you. I'm just putting a little firm shadow. These little guys in through here, maybe this one on the left casts a little bit of a shadow on that guy. Then we've got a little shadow underneath them, something like this. And I'm just doing little tiny shadows. I don't need them to be too large. This one I picture is up in the air a little bit, so I'm going to pull this shadow down just a little bit more so it'll indicate that that's up in the air and is casting a larger shadow underneath because it's so it's away from the surface a little bit. I just need to put my brush back in control. I need to put a little bit more point paint on it with moisture. There we go. Now it's in control. I'm going to put a little shadow back here to indicate that it is casting shadow on that surface. And then this little guy over here just gets a little tiny bit right underneath them. There we go. And then this guy here. So I'm going to have my reflection is going to be coming out like this. So I've got just a little bit of that watered down black on my brush. This is going to help to also clean up or um, if you had any chalk residue, at the bottom of your vase, this is a great step to kind of clean that up. Um, I don't need to do much for the shadow itself, but I do want it to look, you know, pretty authentic. So I can take that chat, the outline, and then just kind of rub it out as if, you know, there's the shadow is just dissipating because of the um, translucency of the, the glass itself. Um, I'm not totally sure this is exactly how it would, I would have to set up this still life with the exact lighting to determine if this was an exact um, correct way to do it, but it seems like it is in my head, so that's what I'm going for. So that, that works in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, reflections, washing and drying my brush, and reflections I usually come right at the viewer. So if you just bring them straight down from your object and maybe out 
or like skew them a little bit wider, that'll make it look like it's coming towards the viewer. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of my lavender color and maybe a little bit of purple too. So lavender and purple to start the, um, these little petal reflections and they, it, the reflection can be darker too, depending on, or lighter, depending on the surface that it's on. So I've got purple and lavender on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of rub this out past my shadow and just give it a pretty, you know, similar type of shape, but it doesn't have to be anything perfect because it's just a reflection. I just wanna give the illusion that um, this is a shiny surface. I'm gonna put these guys, their reflection is gonna kind of be skewed away from here. I guess I could have put part of this on the other side, but I'm thinking this looks pretty good. I'm gonna do it over here as well. So again, this is just my lavender plus a little bit of purple to maybe deepen the tone of it on that table, but that's not necessary. You could totally do a mirror image if you wanted to, but to me, a lot of times when I'm looking at reflections, they seem to be pretty skewed um, with their color as well as their shape. So I'm just gonna kind of do that. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my cobalt blue. I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up cobalt blue and putting it on whatever side it is on the little petal above. So something like that works. I put a little bit there, a little bit in through there, and then a little bit in through here. So again, nothing fancy, just something that's gonna give the illusion. And if you felt like your those little edges you would want them to be a little bit brighter. You could certainly pick up a little bit more of your lavender and make the edge if that, you know, if the if you felt that those edges would help to sell your story and they're brighter, feel free. Oops, I just picked up blue by accident. Feel free to um, do that, but I don't think it's necessary. I think if you just kind of give a similar shape and a similar color, you're you're in the right ballpark. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my. Um, for my vase, just putting a little bit more purple here so we can actually see it. There we go. So, oh, I need to do my red flower too. Hold on. I'm gonna, I wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red for my um, rose petal in through here. And again, just going to rub it on the surface of, that, um, of the table. And I know, of course, that this red is going to be transparent and you're gonna see right through it. So I don't need to add any darkness to this. I'm just knowing that the, that the red is gonna be transparent. That's gonna be enough skewing of the color um, for, for me to be happy with. So I'm just gonna take this, rub it out, make sure that I've got it the way that I want. That's looking good. Softening it, make sure, there we go. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for my vase. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit. I'm going to go start with um, my watered down white paint because that's where I feel I want to kind of just give myself a nice loose exterior to it. So just a little bit of watered down uh, white paint. I'm going to start at this corner and just give it a good curve out and skew it. So if it goes farther, so be it. I'm going to take it from here and same thing. So once I've got, uh, that was a little bit wide, just make sure it's round. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> We're going to pull this. Up. This one's getting skewed a little bit further. There we go. So now that I've got that, what I, I'm just going to kind of translate the, the colors, the color pattern. So when I'm doing um, reflections, I'm really just looking for a color pattern. I don't necessarily need it to be a mirror image, at least for my painterly eye. It doesn't need to be a mirror image, but when you're doing yours, if you feel yours does, then by all means, you can certainly go one for one on those colors. Um, but for me, I don't, my, I don't need it to be that wet. So I'm gonna, uh, I see that this is a little bit light and this is probably only reflecting maybe midway up here. So I'm gonna just take those, that remnants on my brush and kind of lighten up this area in through here. I hardly have any paint on my brush. I'm just kind of rubbing it in to give myself a little bit of an additional lightness in through there. I've got a lavender um, little color over here. So I just picked up lavender and I'm gonna just streak this down this side. I've got a little reflection up there so I can just kind of 
take this in through here. I'm looking for what other colors I have. I've got a little bit of red that I can do over on this right hand side. So I just picked up a little bit of red. I can stick a little bit of red in through there. So whatever you're seeing on the opposite side above it, or you know, uh, in that vase above it is what you want to, the same colors that you want to pull into it. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white because I see a little bit of white right here. So a little bit of white, we'll get that to emulate. My brush is, my hand is shaking right now, so it's not cooperating exactly the way I want. There we go. I have a stem right in through here. So I have, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm putting green and brown on my brush. So green and brown. I'm going right from this corner and giving myself a reflection of this stem right in through there. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more brown just to get that to go a little bit darker. And then I'll pick up a little bit of black because I also see that there's a black uh, shadow on that on the right side. So I just picked up a little bit of black, giving myself that same black line. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put this little bit of this white reflection on in through here. So I'm gonna start this maybe somewhere in through here and then just kind of pull it down. I keep hitting the bottom of my, can my easel. I'm gonna blame it on that as opposed to my shaky hand. <laughs> Something like that, that'll work. And again, doesn't have to be one for one, you know, just, or exact, just, you know, what it, wherever your comfort level is. I'm gonna, um, I feel like I wanna put a little bit more on this side as well. I feel like I might wanna put a little bit of that yellow and white streak. So I just washed and dried my brush, putting a tiny bit of this yellow and white right down in through <laughs> my easel is getting in my way. So we're gonna, we're gonna increase this one up here too. <laughs> here we go. Um, and maybe just a little bit of this, this highlight in through. I got a little bit of that already, but I like it. So maybe I just, I'm gonna pick up my watered down white with a touch of that blue on it. So whatever I did up here, I feel like I wanna put a tiny bit more of that down here. So just itty bitty bit. Just give me something similar down below. And then, I, again, it doesn't have to be exactly one for one, so I would let it dry, and if there's any little adjustments that I wanna do, I certainly would do them. Um, but we are going to be using, just blend this out just a little bit more. We're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I know I said I was gonna be using my small brush, but I soon realized that my small brush was a bright brush, which is a flat tip, and that doesn't really work very well for signing. So I switched to my medium brush because it has a, a pointier tip. So I'm gonna use my medium brush to sign. You could certainly use any brush that is comfortable to you. I like to sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going bottom left on this one, and I'm gonna be signing with black paint. You could certainly sign with any color that you want. I like to use my initials to sign, but you could certainly sign with your first name or you could make a special symbol or use the date. Whatever works for you is, is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself some very beautiful flowers in a shiny vase, <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.